Hello and welcome to another episode of the ship design tutorial series. In today's episode I'm going to be walking through a step by step process of designing a ship using checklists and also other information that will help you understand the design process and each single step. It will cover the design of the ship itself, designing the components of the ship, putting them together and taking from what we've learned in the ship design philosophy videos to get what we want out of the ship that we are currently designing in the class design window. On the right hand side of the screen you will see a checklist that will come up um, at certain times in the video. If it is green, if a certain area is green that means that it, you've checked it off correctly and that thing is checked on the design and that's correct. If it's red that means that it's, we checked and it, it wasn't correct and if it's grey that means it hasn't been checked correctly yet. There are two different lists, there will be the essentials and then the main mission components, the components that we'll need for stuff like weapons and uh, fire controls and sensors and stuff like that. So feel free to follow along with that so you can understand where we are at in the design process. Now to understand what we will be doing today, we're going to be designing a survey vessel from scratch um, and I'm going to be just designing the components as well as everything else. Now keep in mind that your experiences may vary. You can follow along with this tutorial and it will work for you, but the, your experience will vary as you may be designing a different kind of ship, you may have different technology, um, and you may have a different philosophy you want to take with your vessel. So keep that in mind when you are designing these vessels as this is not a good idea to just carbon copy. Um, use this as a guideline to allow you to look at, okay, so this is how you would design a ship, and you gotta make sure you go through all these checks and make sure you know you got a deployment time right, got your armor rating right, got, you got, got all that stuff right that you're, you're gonna need. So yeah. Um, another thing as well, I will be in Space Master mode for this, which means that um, just so that I can instantly research the component stuff, so keep in mind that, you know, I will be instantly researching it, um, but you will obviously will have to research that on your own, and you'll have to weigh in the RP cost depending on what you want, okay? So now that the, the intro for the video is out of the way, please don't like, comment, and subscribe, it really does help out, and let's get right into it. So we're going to design a geological survey vessel. This is usually the first ship that you design, um, and it's you know it's one of the most important vessels um, in the early game. So I've already made a new class. It's called the Belgium class, and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to turn it into a geological survey vessel. Now this doesn't actually do anything but just name the ship to how I want it to be named to. Um, this doesn't affect anything in any way. It just makes it so it's more coherent when you look at it. Um, in other windows and look at it in other places. So now that we've got that down, now the next thing we need to do is we need to figure out what do we want the ship to be. So if we're going to be trying to accomplish a task of, let's say, surveying the soul system, or surveying soul or surveying systems, well then what are we going to need? Well, we're probably going to need a jump drive if we want to go for inter... Uh, inter stellar uh, surveying, uh, we're going to need survey sensors, uh, we're going to need engines that are probably pretty fuel efficient because otherwise you know we won't be able to get a lot of distance out of our ship, uh, we're going to need pretty heavy on deployment time um, and we're also going to need some pretty good maintenance life if we're going to make this work. We also might want to include some sensors. So let's go down the list, the first thing you want to look is our deployment time, so I'm thinking that for a Survey vessel, let's do a 48 month deployment time or four years. That will increase our crew quarters and that will add some things. Uh, one second, I will put this on wide view for you guys. Um, there we go. So, this will add a few things, um, but that will mean that the ship can stay you know, deployed for 48 months. Now, it's going to be a military ship because, you know, we are going to using survey sensors and those are automatically military so you know we're gonna we're gonna be forced to to use that, have that deployment time correctly um now there isn't too much we can do here without adding in anything else um so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go design the engines so i'm so before you design an engine the most important thing is you got to figure out what kind of tonnage you're looking at for your ship so i'm gonna go for a 7500 ton ship 
Um, so I would say you want to look at the ratios, right? So if it's 7,500 tons, how much of the percentage of that do I want to uh, allocate to the engines? Okay. So I'm thinking about 40% or less for the engines. So that means, you know, 3,500 tons ish. Um, I'm looking at 3,750 tons. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to design 3,000 tons worth of engines. Um, now we also again have to decide, so we're going to come into the component window here. I've got magnetoplasma. We've got to decide, okay, well, are we going to do one engine or two engines? The benefit of one engine is that it's more efficient and you, it's, you get more power for less space. The benefit of two engines is if one engine fails, you still have that second engine. And so you won't, you know, you can still move and get back to be repaired. Um, so I'm going to design two engines here. So I'm going to put them at a size of uh, 1,500 tons, um, which should be uh, 20. It should be 25. 25. One second. No, that's 25. 1,300. That'll be size 30. My bad. Size 30 engines. I was, I was incorrect. So... Um, so we're going to have two size 30 engines, so that'll be 3,000 tons total, which will give us 4,500 tons left over for other stuff. Um, we're going to, so that'll be 400 engine power, so that's pretty good overall speed, but we can probably cut back on that, as we don't really need them to go that fast, and we want them to gain extra mileage. So, instead of having more engine power, we're going to reduce our engine power to, I think, 80%. Um, and that means that we're, we're getting a, quite a massive decrease there. We went from 200 liters per hour to a good old 88 liters per hour. And we only lose 20, we lose nearly, you know, half, we, we, we lose 100%, uh, or we increase our fuel efficiency nearly 100 fold, um, but we decrease our power by only, you know, 20%, which isn't actually that much. I mean, we were getting 480 power, and now we're going to be getting 80 power. So, not that bad overall. So, um, I'm just going to turn SM mode on so I can I can instant research this. <laughs> um, so, we're going to do 80, 80 power, uh, and then we'll do size 30 engines. There we go. Um, keep in mind as well, your tech will be different, so you'll get different numbers, but this is generally the rule of thumb as, as we go through here. Um, so what I am going to do uh, is I'm going to have to come back into here to make it actually work with uh, Space Master mode, um, which basically just allows me to instant research this so that we can keep the video moving. Uh, so 80%, and we're going to instant research that magnetoplasma drive. Feel free to give it a name if you do want to for RP purposes or for anything else. Um, so now we're going to add in our engines. Uh, so... Uh, we have our 384 engine power engine, so we're going to add in two of those. So that's now 3,666 tons. Um, and we've already got 50 billion kilometers out of that. That's going to decrease as we increase the tonnage because it's going to have to propel more uh, volume uh, in space. Uh, keep in mind in this game, uh, weight, quote unquote, or tons is, equal, is, is volume of hydrogen. It is not actually um, you know, what we would think of normally as a ton. Um, which would be a measurement of weight, not of volume. Okay, uh, so now that we have the engines, um, the next thing we we'll probably want to do is add in our geological survey sensors. Um, we also need to consider, do we want to add gravitational survey sensors as well? Because if we're going to send this on extra solar activities, then we're going to need to add in some way for it to be able to survey survey locations. Now, you can also split this up into another ship, but for this, we're just we're going to add both on. So I'm going to add uh, one improved geological. So that's you know 250 tons. That's pretty big. I'm going to add in a gravitational survey sensor. So that so that is we allocated about 500 tons to that, which is not a small amount. That's about 10 you know eight ten percent of the ship is is in uh, survey sensors. Um, we are also then going to add in our engineering. So we want to probably we want to match our deployment time specifically to make sure it is correct. So uh, let's let's go down here. So uh, we want maintenance life. So to do that, I'm going to add in our engineering spaces. Okay, uh, that will give us enough max repair. So if an engine fails, we'll be able to repair it, 
and it'll give us a pretty decent average yearly fairly rate. We now have 3,000 tons to, to do with, um, which is plenty margin for a jump drive and some sensors and extra fuel. So before we continue, let's go through the checklist. So we have our engines, so that's a green check for that. Uh, we have um, mission critical stuff, so that's our survey sensors. We have our maintenance life sorted, and we also have our deployment time sorted. So those are all green check marks. So now we are going to add in a jump drive. So let's go and design our jump drive. So really all we're looking here is a military jump drive that is within the exact weight of what we're looking for. So size 25 here. That should get 7,500 tons, and I'm happy with that, and so we'll instant that. Uh, keep in mind, obviously, you know, if you have worse tech, it's going to be a bigger, a bigger jump drive, so you have to adjust ratios and make sure that's correct for you. Okay, let's uh, get the jump drive. So I'm going to put the jump drive in now. So there we go. So that gives us 1,500 tons left, and that gives it the ability to jump, uh, which is, you know, very, very handy. Um, we got a decent speed as well, 6,414 kilometers a second, so I'm pretty happy with that overall. Um, we could probably lose one of the engines here if we wanted to. Um, so now I'm going to add in some extra fuel because, you know, we're going, we're going to need to uh, add in that extra fuel. So um, I'm looking for about 100 billion kilometers on this kind of a vessel. So we're going to go for, I think, uh, 750 liters sounds okay-ish. Um, what happens if we got rid of one of the engines? Uh, it would extend it by a bit, but it wouldn't extend it a lot. Um, so I'm just going to keep the magnetoplasma drive engine there. Um, so with the extra space here, what we can do is um, we've got about 1,000 tons to play with. So with that 1,000 tons, what I'm going to use to play with it is I'm going to add in um, some extra geological and gravitational survey sensors because they obviously, you know, they stack. Um, and I'm also going to add in some engineering spaces um, to be able to increase that maintenance life uh, accordingly. Um, because we want to make, because as we add more components in, it's going to be more complex. And if it's more complex, that means we need to have more uh, engineering spaces and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, cost is looking good. Build time is looking good. Deployment time is looking good. Um, we have our fuel. We have our jump drive. So that is good. Um, the only thing missing now is we can add in some sensors, so actives won't do us any good because for the mission we're trying to build for this ship, um, for the mission we're specifically trying to build for this ship, um, we don't want to be detected because we're going to be surveying new worlds, possibility of aliens, and so passive sensors are going to be our best bet in this case. Um, so we're going to research passive sensors. So we have about 250 tons to play with, so we're going to go for, um, what would that be? 2.5, 2.25, 113 tons. I think 113 ton sensors on both will work, so we're going to instant that one. And then I'm also going to go over here to EM sensors and then do 2.25. Okay, those are both done. And now we are going to go over here and uh, we are going to design uh, the sensors onto the ship. So let's have a look here. Uh, Thermal electromagnetic sensor. Um, so this is this is a decent size. Uh, what size is this? 113 tons. So I'll add in one of those, and then I'm going to add in our thermal sensor accordingly. So thermal sensor, and that gives us about 20 tons to play with um, left. So I'm going to add in some extra fuel. Um, because you can never have too much, too much fuel, obviously. Uh, so we just went over the limit there, uh, so we're gonna have to... What did I add? Uh, let me have a look here. I added another thermal sensor, that was a mistake. Um, so we need to add in the extra fuel storage now, so fuel storage, so fuel storage, small, small, small. And this is how you kind of fill up your ship if it's an uneven number, just add fighters and small storages in, and that should fill it up. So there we go. We have a ship that can go that is 7,500 tons, can go 5,120 kilometers a second, has a jump drive, has engines, has a decent range, has survey sensors, and is overall looking like a pretty good vessel. 
So let's go through our checklist. So for, first off with our checklist, deployment time, that's a check. We got, we got our deployment time down. Um, we've, we've already got that checked. Um, we've, we've already got that checked. Uh, and uh, one second, I need to pull the checklist up. So deployment time, we've got the check. Fuel, we have the check. 76 billion kilometers, I'm happy with that. Maintenance life, we've got the, we've got the check. We've got 4.7 years worth of maintenance, and we can also repair our max repair. Uh, special uh, condition, so this is our survey sensors uh, and making sure our jump drive can fit and everything can fit with that, so that's a check. Um, status, civilian or military, so our military status is correct, so we've got military status. Component checklist, uh, so we have our propulsion correct, we've got our sensors correct, we've got our, um, and then, and then we don't have anything else because obviously we don't have weapons or fire controls or defenses, so... Sensors and propulsion are a check. Engines are a check. Uh, everything, everything else is a check. Cost looks good. Um, and yeah, that is that is it. That that that's a great vessel that we just designed now with that system. We checked it off. We made sure that we got what we needed to. Made use the checklist to make sure they didn't have any issues or there was any problems that we need to correct. And yeah, there we go. Uh, that is the Belgium class geological service vessel now designed and ready for use. Pretty simple ship design can look complicated and it can get more and more complicated, obviously, as you build military ships. Um, but I hope you have enjoyed. Please like, comment, subscribe. Um, let me know if you want to see more videos like this, where I do maybe uh, videos with mil other mil with more military kind of vessels and talk about turret design and weapon design and stuff like that. I'll see you next time. Please, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye-bye. You guys have a great one.